Hello there friends and welcome, for today's Pathfinder guide we have a very fun and quite unique build, a Naga form shifter, that's right, you can't really see it here because of how huge we are under the Naga form, but yes, you will fight as a Naga, probably the most unique form in the game because only sorcerers can get access to it through Serpentine Bloodline. Now I've been meaning to make a build focus into this for quite a long time, right, because despite the fact it only comes at level 20, through a mythic ability gained at level 1, you can gain access to it way earlier, at level 5 or 6. The problem is, back then the form used to be kinda weak, and there weren't many ways of increasing its power, because it was stuck with just one attack per round. Nowadays, however, because of the new shifter class, we can truly increase the power of our Naga shape to the max, by overcoming its main weakness, that is, a low number of attacks per round. With the shifter's fury ability, we'll have, well, as a legend, you can get even higher than 9 attacks, but besides that, around 4 to 5, just like any other character. With great damage, of course, even good armor class too, mostly because of how powerful Shifter is, and amazing physical scores, with great damage as well. So without further ado, let us get into our Naga form Shifter build. Now, as far as class, we want to start as a Shifter. While it is true that to actually get the Naga form, you need at the very least one level into Sorcerer, you can only get the form at the earliest during Mythic level 1, which is around level 5 to level 6 at the end of chapter 1, so there isn't much of a point into beginning the game as a Sorcerer. It's going to be a lot easier as a Shifter. Shifter is one of the most solid and powerful classes in the game, and I already have a guide explaining all of their features in depth, right? So feel free to check that out if you want, but to put it simply, the main benefit of being a shifter for a Naga form build comes from the shifter's fury ability, because by default the Naga only has a single attack per round, which is rather poor, right? Especially as you progress through the game. With shifter's fury, however, we can enhance that equal to our base attack bonus, which means you'll have the same number of attacks in the Naga form as, let's say, a fighter of the same level. Now, there is a certain annoying bug with this ability and the Naga form. For some reason, it will keep turning itself off, usually after every round or after battle ends. Thankfully, because it's an infinite use ability, well, you can just turn it back on as many times as you want, without spending any action. Thankfully, eventually, most battles will be over in just one round anyways, especially when you're attacking with your party members. When it comes to archetype, honestly, I would just go with the normal shifter. For this build, it's perfect. Now for race, well if you want early game power, as always human is the best pick, we need a lot of feats with this build, but eventually, as we'll be going legend, it's not that we'll be lacking in feats, but that's only way later. For background, the classic street urchin pickpockets is always going to be the best choice for the bonus to initiative. Now when it comes to ability scores, because we need a lot of stats, I would go with 18 strength at character creation, you can make it into an even score as you level up as a legend later, 14 dexterity, 12 constitution is enough, but I would rather 14, feel free to dump your intelligence, we are a shifter after all, then 16 wisdom, and for that, dump your charisma as well. Of course, you don't have to dump these stats if you don't want to, it's just that they don't do anything for this build, outside of letting you cast level 1 sorcerer spells, which you don't really need, it's just for the naga form. This way you have a plus 3 and 2, so 5, when you combine it with Major Armor, that's a plus 9 to AC, even at, let's say, level 2. For skill points, we have a bonus from being a human in race, but even if you went with another race, 2 skill points are still enough. Athletics, because of our high strength. Then, mobility, and you can't choose one of the dexterity skills. I would rather stealth, trickery can be covered by Camellia or Arushale later, even Mojif 2. Now, for your level 1 feats, Ideally, as always, power, attack, and then cleave for two attacks per round, even at level 1, which is a massive quality of life increase. Now, because you are a shifter, you start with double shifter claws, even at level 1 too. It's just that early game you won't have the best AC possible, it takes a while for the shifter bonuses to come into play. So what you can do early on before the Naga form is... Well, shifters have simple weapon proficiency, so they can equip long spears, which are rich weapons. With Cleave, you also have two long spear attacks while remaining safe from enemy hits. Or you can just go with the claws, it's up to you. 
in which case cleave wouldn't really help because you already have two claws, but cleave is still needed for cleaving finish anyways, which is a great pick regardless. For the first shifter aspect, I'd rather focus into Mammoth, for the bonus to strength, for higher AB and damage. For Deity, as you'll be going Trickster first, look, it's not that you have to be a Trickster, I do think it fits a shifter, shape-shifting character though, but Trickster is definitely the strongest choice gameplay-wise, as far as early mythic path for this type of character. Later will be a legend, or we can just skip to Trickster. While you can pick other mythic paths, they won't really be as strong, and while the Naga form does need all the power-ups it can get if you want it to be really good. Anyways, for Trickster we need the Chaotic Alignments. Let's do something different and go with Lamashtu, who is the goddess of monstrous creatures and so on, quite fitting for a Naga. Then be sure to pick Chaotic Neutral, you have to get this one if you want to be a Trickster and a Shifter. For your level 3 feat, Cleaving Finish, as I mentioned before, the extra attack is even better, so now you have a potential 3 attacks, even as early as level 3. That's triple most other characters. At level 4, increase strength, which is also what you want to increase on all of the other levels for as high AB and damage as possible. Now, at level 4, you can already change into a Mammoth if you want, or just wait one or two more levels for the Naga form. At level 5 is when you can consider multiclassing into Sorcerer to actually get the Naga form. This is going to depend on when you get Mythic level 1, right? Usually it's around level 6 to me, but that's if you do all of the side optional content in chapter 1, which is why I'll be delaying Sorcerer for level 6, but if you find yourself, let's say, at the Grey Garrison, the last chapter 1 area, and you're level 5, at the beginning of level 5 even, so you won't increase your level 6, well, multi-class into Sorcerer now, and you would just pick the normal Sorcerer and the Serpentine Bloodline, but you meet Steel Shifter. For our level 5 feet, as always combat reflexes because we won't have the space for hit later. And since you'll be going with Trickster, this is even more useful for more attacks of opportunity later on. For the second aspect, I'd rather Wolf for higher bonuses with natural attacks. But remember, you can only apply two minor aspects at the same time starting from level 9, so you might as well just keep to Mammoth now for the bonus to strength. You will be able to change into a Wolf too, if you prefer. Now level 6 is when I would go into Sorcerer, just the normal as I've said before, the other ones don't offer benefits or they block you from picking the Serpentine Bloodline. For the bonus feat, go with Extend Spell, as this can help you once you become a Trickster for the Mythic Spellbook. Now your level 1 Sorcerer spells don't matter because you won't really have Charisma to cast them for most of the game, but you might as well pick Mage Armor and True Strike as they aren't reliant on level, and you'll never be more than a level 1 Sorcerer. Now resume progression into Shifter, we already have everything we need from Sorcerer. For level 7, the classic, Outflank, always a must-have for any melee build. And don't forget, we also get Shifter's Fury now, which means double attacks with our Naga form, 3 even with the Haste spell. As for the level 9 feat, Improved Critical is the way to go and we want Bite. The Naga form's primary attack is a Bite, and with Shifter's Fury you can get way more. While you can choose it to be close to because of being a shifter, it won't be the primary attack, so your attacks of opportunity will still be bites, I'd rather specialize into them. Plus you have a mask in the game that increases your number of bites by an extra per round, so it's also great. At level 10 you'll get Chimeric Aspect, so be sure to combine Wolf and Mammoth for higher damage and strength. Now at level 11 you have two choices here. Because at this point, if you rush during chapter 3, you can already get Trickster Mythic 4, which means of course the special Trickster critical feats, from the Perception rank 2 trick to qualify you for them. What you want now is to get multiple at the same time. So if you're already at Mythic 4 during level 11, what you can do is multi-class into Fighter and Mutation Warrior. It's not only the strongest fighter archetype, but the best choice for a shifter thematically too. Especially a worshipper of Lamashtu, right? This way we get to pick the first special critical feat into Bites, of course, together with the second one right at the same level for the maximum critical range with Bites, the earliest you can get. Of course, if you only find yourself getting Mythic 4 at around level 13, you can delay Fighter for this point. Anyways, you can now resume progression into Shifter until level 15, or since you already have one level in Shimutation Warrior, get two more 
for the mutagen and the last trickster critical feat, which is what I'll be doing. After all, we already have the best shifter feature for this build, which is Shifter's Fury anyways, and it's gonna scale based on your BAB, not class levels. This way we can get the last trickster critical feat right at the next level, level 12, for higher critical damage with bites. Now let's go for the last fighter level at this point, just for the mutagen, which is very helpful. And at level 13 you have two choices, you can pick Shifter's Multi-Attack now. The main reason I don't pick it before is, look, we won't have many secondary attacks with this build, right? There's a Gore from the Demon Ascension and an extra Cloth from being a Shifter. It's just two of them. Most of them will be primary bites anyways. So this isn't that concerning. Or you can also go for Lunge now. It's a pity we don't have the space for it earlier, but it's a really helpful feat. So pick whatever you prefer now and delay the other one for level 15. I'd rather lunge because at this point you'll have more than enough bonuses to AB, and having extra reach is always helpful. Now you can keep Mutation Warrior to level 5 for weapon training, and an extra feat I just don't think it's needed at this point, so I would rather resume Shifter until level 15 now for the last upgrade to our minor aspects, so that we get a plus 6 inherent to our stats. For another aspect, you can go with Spider for higher AC, it's up to you. And there's also Tiger for Dexterity, or Boar for higher hit points, the same for Wolverine. For level 15, Shifter's Multi-Attack now, or Lunge, if you didn't pick it before. For 17, because you'll soon become a legend with this build, I'd rather, as always, get the last Trickster Special Feats, because you won't be able to pick them later. First, Stat Focus, and you can choose between Attack or Damage. You'll be getting both anyways, I'd rather attack first. Level 19 should be your last shifter level, so 15 total, right? Because at this point, as I said before, your minor aspects will have scaled to the max already. So let's grab stat focus into damage. Any other aspect you want, you are limited to 3 anyways, with greater chimeric aspect. While there is something to be said about increasing shifter to 20, for the final aspect ability, which is quite powerful, I'd much rather get 20 levels of Mutation Warrior later through Legend, because Weapon Mastery is a really powerful ability, and since we have one level into Sorcerer anyways for the Naga form, you kinda have to choose one class to get to level 20. To me, Mutation Warrior is the way to go. I'll just pick Wolverine here if you want higher hit points, because it's based on your level, right? So as a legend, you can get even more if you prefer. The rage powers don't matter because you won't be in Wolverine form. The true form is just the minor aspect, so pick whatever you want. Now at this point, more like level 19, you'll be a legend already, or you can just remain a trickster. But if you go legend, you'll gain like 15 entire levels added at once to your character. So this is when you should resume progression into Mutation Warrior. And for level 20, as a bonus fighter feat, weapon focus into bite. And as I said, you want to keep Mutation Warrior until level 20, for Weapon Mastery. Plus all the nice feats you'll be getting now, starting with Weapon Specialization into Bites, and Weapon Training into Natural Attacks. For 22, because like I said before, you'll get loads of Legend levels at once, definitely more than 10. Let's start with our Shatter Defenses package, we just didn't have the space for it before, not as a trickster. First, Dazzling Display. And of course, Shatter Defenses at 23 together with Pharaoh Mutagen. The extra bite attack won't really stack, but at least you get cool looking wings later on. It's just that the other two don't really matter for this build. At level 24, Greater Weapon Focus Bite. Then at 25, Great Cleave. Just so we can get improved cleaving finish. Together with Trained Initiative. And don't forget to keep increasing weapon training into natural. For 26, Improved Cleaving Finish, which as a legend can add quite a lot of extra attacks to your build. For 27, Improved Initiative and Feral Wings, so now you are a winged Naga. For 28, Greater Weapon Specialization into Bites. Not sure why it has a thumbs down icon here, but it's definitely a great choice. By 29+, plus, you kinda already have the best feats anyways. So let's go with Blind Fight now. And Fighter's Tactics, so we can at least benefit from certain teamwork feats we'll be picking later on. Even if... Only your shifter has them. For 30, you might as well pick dodge and shake it off at 31, together with greater mutagen at last. For 32, precise strike and then hammer the gap at the next level, together with fighter's reflexes. 
At 34 plus, you truly already have everything you could want, so you might as well pick anything now. As we don't get more weapon training, well, armed bravery can help. At 35, well, why not pick toughness? At the very least, it has higher synergy with the higher legend level cap. And at last, Grand Mutagen for a very powerful alchemical bonus to our stats. At 36, we are level 20 Mutation Warrior, which means Weapon Mastery. And of course, we want Bites. The extra critical damage will help a lot because we can't afford Mythic Critical as a Legend. No space for it. And just pick whatever you want now, I'm going with Improved Critical and Gore. Because we do have a Gore and a Claw attack, but like I said, it won't matter much. But it's better than nothing. Now, once you max Mutation Warrior at level 37, as I said before, because you can't get Shifter up to level 20, I'd rather go into more multi-classes now. They don't matter much, but they can increase your power by a bit. It's just that at this point you are overwhelmingly good anyways. But there's always the classic Ranger and Demon Slayer for the plus 2 to attack and damage against all demons. And for a feat, improved critical into Claw. Now, the other levels are up to you. I'd much rather keep to high base attack bonus classes, though, for higher synergy with Shifter's Fury and Power Attack. Because you have three levels to spare, you might as well go with three inches later, because at least you get one dice of sneak attack together with study target. After all, why not? But you can keep to Shifter if you prefer, or get anything else you want. I'd actually go with Vanguard, because the other ones don't matter, I mean, we'll lose a talent, but like I said, at this point we have more than enough feats. At least through the Tactician ability you get your share, one of the teamwork feats you already have with your party members, like let's say Precise Strike, or Shake It Off. And you'll still get the Sneak Attack and Study Target. At 39 any feat, I'll just be going with Raking Claws. And for an extra teamwork feat as a Vanguard, well, we already have the best ones anyway, so pick whatever you want such as coordinated defense or maneuvers. And that's it. Quite an eclectic level spread, right? All right, now let's do mythic progression for our Naga Shifter. First with how it works as a legend, but after that I'll give you the trickster progression too. Now the first ascension is the same close to the abyss. We really can use the extra gore attack per round to further boost our form's power. For Mythic level 1, you absolutely must pick Bloodline Ascendance, after all, it's what makes the Naga form build work. Then Scaled Soul, so now we'll have access to it as early as Mythic level 1. While you also get the Poison ability from Serpent's Fang, the DC is rather low, and, well, most enemies will be immune to poison anyways, like all demons. But there we are, Spirit Naga shape. You also have a Charming Gaze, but like I said, the DC is very, very low for it. For Mythic level 2, you have two choices, because as a legend, this is the last Mythic feat you pick, you only get one. Either Mythic Power Attack, which of course will highly increase your damage as a legend later on, or Extra Mythic Ability and Master Shape Shifter for the plus 4 bonus to all ability scores, physical ones anyways, during the Naga form. This is definitely the better choice for the early game, but later, as a legend, Mythic Power Attack is kinda better, so it's up to you which one you prefer. You have infinite uses of the Naga form anyways, from Scaled Soul. As a trickster you can combine both, but not once you become a legend. So unless you are planning on respecting before becoming a legend, later, be sure to pick the one you'd prefer to keep for later at Mythic level 2. I'll just go with Master Shape Shifter here, you'll still have high damage anyways. Then at Mythic 3, well, we don't really get anything as a legend outside of the plus 4 to ability scores. Now, when it comes to progression as a trickster, the beginning is mostly the same. Close to the abyss for the first ascension. Then for mythic level 2, master shape shifter through extra mythic ability. For mythic 3, you'll want ever ready. At mythic 4, mythic critical into bite. At mythic 5, you can pick anything you want, including last stand or mythic charge if you have someone to provide pounce, like a scald. Then at mythic 6, mythic power attack, or you can trade it for... Master Shape Shifter at Mythic 2 as a legend, it's up to you. At Mythic 7, also anything you want. And as far as the trickster tricks, at Mythic 3, get Arcana 1. Mythic 4 is the most important, and of course it's when you get both Perception 1 and 2 to qualify for the special trickster feats. The other ones don't really matter unless you plan on remaining a trickster, because as a legend you lose access to them anyways. Alright, now let's cover gear for our Naga Shifter. A bit distracting to be a giant snake, but here we are. It's going to be the classic Shifter package. For the amulet, 
Mighty Fists, right to enhance our natural attacks, unless you have, let's say, a character that can cast the Magic Fang spell, the greater version especially, let's say, a Ruchale or a Ranger and Druid, Hunter's Jewel. Armor is unnecessary for a shifter, we can get quite the nice amount because of our buffs and shifter bonuses. For the shirt, Bestial Rags is as always the best pick for any shape-shifting character. For the belt, as always, Arrow Dance Belt too, for the massive bonus to attack and damage, but earlier just belts of strength and then strength and constitution or dexterity. For gloves, ultimately Fencer's Gift, because we do have weapon training with natural attacks. For boots, despite the fact we aren't a dexterity character, Ronex Sacrifice can still help a lot, because Arrow Belt doesn't increase any stat. With this you can achieve even higher AC, as we do gain bonuses from both Wisdom and also Dexterity. For Helmets, early you can go with Headbands of Wisdom, later the Owl's Cowl. As far as glasses, the Mask of Rapid Vice is by far the best. Having the ability to perform two bite attacks on the first strike is really good. For Cloaks, as both Trickster and Legend Cloaks are kind of weak, just go with Resistance plus 6. For Rings, as always, Triumphant Advance to increase your damage and attack. And amusingly enough, you can also use the Rage spell to increase your Strength and Constitution by plus 4 as morale. Sure, you won't be able to cast spells, but we are a shifter that only attacks as an Naga, right? We don't have any spell casting. It does have a slight penalty to AC though, but we have reach. Now for the second ring it's up to you, I like Guiding Star to grant us a very nice amount of initiative since we can't afford Mythic Initiative as a legend, but you can also go with Rings of Evasion. And as far as Bracers, just Bracers of Armor with the highest modifier. Now let us cover weapons and quick slots. we don't really need any weapon as a shifter, right? We already attack with our claws and most importantly bites, but early game before you get the Naga form, don't forget you can go with Long Spears as a reach weapon to attack from safety behind your tanks and other allies. Later though, you can have very high AC anyways, even as a shifter not built into it. The Triceratops statuette is here because it's the way to get a pet for free, Bismuth the Dinosaur. And as a legend, it will scale up to level 20, 4 levels higher than the other mythic paths. The Lucky Dice, just for minor bonuses, Jarsigax for extra elemental damage, the Signet to increase any skill of choice as always, and the Trusted Friend for the bonus to Charisma, it doesn't matter for this build, it's just here because it's a Legend exclusive item, so might as well show it off, right? I didn't really bother with use Magic Device with this build for scrolls, but you can go that path if you prefer. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my Naga Form Shifter build and guide. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member if you can. I really appreciate your support. It's definitely one of my most unique builds, with more soon to come, of course. That's the beauty of Pathfinder, you'll never run out of content and stuff to do, right? Thank you for watching, see you next time, friends.